there is a spot where it says, insert God here. And instead of inserting God here, you inserted an image of what you think God was. Or your own ideas, your own ideology, your own religiosity. You have placed it in this space. And then you are wondering why you have not brought forth fruit. Psalm 1 says, Psalm 1 verse 3, if I'm not mistaken, says that he shall be a tree planted by rivers of waters, paraphrasing very quickly. I find it weird that any tree that God, Jesus himself, seen a tree that didn't bring forth fruit and cursed the very tree. Which brings me to where I am at this moment. He cursed the very tree, the roots, and everything. A tree should be a tree. A tree should have leaves, branches, should bring forth fruit, should have nutrient, nutrients, should bring nurture to where it is. It shouldn't be dead. If you are dead or limiting yourself, you are now taking up space. And some of us want, some of us have been growing and building and achieving, but at some point, there's been a stagnation in your growth. Something has come along and limited your very growth, your mindset, and how you operate not only in the spirit, but in the practical and with people. I hear the Lord say to you today, he did run well. He did run well, but who did hinder you? Many of you, God has given you mantles and offices and burdens and titles that's, don't, that's not, even, not even ordained in the practical as of yet. But he has called you to many things, intercessors, prayer warriors, prophetic utter, people with prophetic gifts. And something has come along and hindered your very growth. Who and what did it limit you? Who and what did limit you? Let us pray. Most righteous and heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this moment. I thank you for this time. Lord, search me. See if there be any wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free so that your word may be delivered on how you have brought it to me. Lord, let me not add or subtract anything but what you have given me, let it be put out into this atmosphere. Father, use me. Empty me of all my sins, all my transgressions, everything that would stop this word from moving upon the airs and the waters of this realm. Take control of this atmosphere and let someone be healed, delivered, saved, and let your word be edified, glorified, and you be lifted high. In no other name I pray, but your name, Jesus' name, amen. Last two weeks, I missed you first of all. This is good to see everybody's face. Amen. The last two weeks on Pentecost Sunday, I read on to you when the, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. The atmosphere was ripe and God moved so powerfully in this place. Amen. In doing so, I realized that there was something that happened that was uncanny in that scripture we have read it we have heard people preach on it but there's some great things that happened the first thing i want people to understand is they were not alone nobody i do i do believe there was lots and lots of people there but they weren't family they weren't jamaican they weren't all jamaican they weren't all trinidadian they all weren't haitian caribbean african spanish they were just a bunch of people gathering on the day of pentecost what that lets me know is that we don't have to be of a certain mindset of a certain skin color of a certain gr um, growing up of teaching to receive the power of god amen what shows me is that people and this is a powerful thing people who needed God more than anything and was tired of what they thought was God, came together and experienced God on a higher level. Now watch this. All of a sudden, a, a Russian mighty wind came, and in their worship, they all began to speak in the same heavenly language. 
cloven tongues. They began to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? What that shows me is that now all of these people in one accord gathering, not by themselves, but came together in one accord and broke past the thing that limited them. Which means that they had to throw out their whole mindset and ideology of what they thought would get them to the next level and do something they have never done. Can somebody hear me in this place? They are now shifted out of the low place and entered into a place that have them thinking and have them hearing. See, to speak the Holy Spirit, I believe you hear it before anything. To, when you are filled, there's a sound. It's like hearing God's voice before anything comes. When you begin to pray, the Spirit gives utterance, gives words or murmurings that cannot be uttered. There's things that happen in your spirit that shift you to another plane. See, when we're operating in a place of weakness and you begin to pray, and you don't know what you're praying for, then you begin to open up your mouth and with your heavenly language and your heavenly tongue begin to lift up a sound and your spirit begins to give you all that you need to pray and intercede for in that moment. I don't know if you had that experience and I pray that you do real soon, but then it shifts you to another plane. You are no longer on the earthly realm. You move to the starry realm or even the holies of holies. Amen? With your worship, with your presence, with your adoration for God. Amen. I come before you today because my topic, the topic that the series we're going with is no limit. But my subtopic is from limit to limitless. Amen. From limit to limitless. In this scripture that I'm going to read, I went from Acts 2, but now I want you, I want to go to a place where the women and the men can understand. One of the wonderful scriptures and the stories we love to hear about, you know, us, you know, when I was, oh, not, not us single people, but when I was single and I used to hear the women always talking about this book, get the book of Ruth and finding their Boaz. And I found it crazy on everybody Every lady I know when they're talking about Boaz will not do the things Ruth did to achieve their Boaz. Oh, we're quiet in here. I like that. We think what we have in the physical is enough to receive something greater that God has there. A lot of us are saying, like Mary J. I say this, Mary J. Blige has damaged a lot of women. Here's how. Yeah, here's how, woman of God. The song she says, take me as I am or have nothing at all, has begun to let people know that I will not change from how I am right now. A lot of you are singing songs in the practical but don't understand what you're declaring in the spiritual. What we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And what we loose on earth is loose in heaven. So we utter some of these songs from our wonderful secular songwriters that are singing these songs to you but want something else and is doing something else without you seeing. Take me as I am. I have nothing at all. When I heard that, when I, I thought about it throughout this week, it reminded me something different, Minister Foy. Ruth may have been Something, there were two women. I'll go like this. There are two women. Three, actually. There's Naomi, Orpah, and Ruth. In the scripture, and you can read it to yourselves, um, Acts chapter, I mean, sorry, Ruth chapter 1, verse 1 to 19. I want you, when you get a chance to read it. In that, in that scripture, you can see the breakdown of how they were married. Orpah and Ruth were married to Naomi's children. Elimelech already had died. And the sons of Elimelech also died also. So now we have three widow women that are still in the land of the Moabites. They stuck here now and don't know what to do until Naomi gets a, a sound or hears that back in her country there is some, there is God is moving, there is things happening in this area. I'm paraphrasing. I want you to, when you get a chance, you'll read it. 
In hearing this, there is a decision that needed to be made, Church of God. Amen. Naomi looks at Orpah and Ruth and tells both of them, I have my womb, cannot bring any more sons to you. There will be no more children coming out of this womb for you to marry. Take up your stuff, paraphrasing, take up your stuff and go back to your land. How many have been given this option after breakups, after things that have happened, after troubling times? Somebody says, go back to where you came from. Because there is nothing here for you. Now, when hearing this, <laughs> I hear you, Lord. In hearing this, there is an issue that I had. At this crossroad, there was no direction. There was really no direction. It was a word spoken and said that you make the choice. You're either going, whatever you do, I already told you, go back to where you're coming from. But the choice has to be made to see that there is more that meets the eye. Orpah, the Mary J. Blige, kissed her mother and began to walk back to where she came. The most beautiful thing happened in this scripture, 11 minutes, I like that, perfect. In this scripture, the most wonderful thing happens. Ruth, Ruth now, knowing, and I feel there's a lot of women, a lot of women in this house, knowing that back in the land that you came from, there is nothing left for you. When you left, you had nothing. You had no job, you had no home, you had no, no house, no car, no, you could even know where your next dinner or meal came from. No family, you may have had family, but even those family is not family. Amen, if you understand what I mean. Because we have a habit of saying that we're family, but we mistreat the same people worse than somebody on the street. I don't hear nobody in this church. Too many times people have hidden behind the name family to disrespect, to disregard, to alienate, to trouble, to cast you aside. And when you ask if there's, like David asks, is there not a cause? No, that we're just family. We can talk to like that, have tough skin. The devil is a liar. Amen? In doing so, Ruth now looks at Naomi. The Moabites, the more, the more from a Moabites looks at Naomi, Naomi and says, entreat me not to leave thy side. Says, let your people be my people. My yoke and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. That's a powerful thing. When somebody is saying to you, I won't leave your side because now a, Ruth has now realized that everything from her past must be cast away. See, when you're comfortable with the past things and the present things, you will not strive or push past to your future. It is hard to see the future when you're comfortable in the present and with your past. That's why we don't let go in relationships, past relationships and acquaintances because it's a comfort thing. It's good to be comfortable where you're at. So we ever so slightly tend to think about what, you know, the roll back the curtains of memories now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. We think of the things of the past, but it causes more damage than anything. Our mindsets need to be renewed. Our minds and hearts and our spirits need to be transformed. How many times have we called ourselves casting and throwing out the old man, but the next following day we go right back to the old ways? Ruth has now declared everything within her. Entreat me not to leave thy side. She has declared, I am not going anywhere. Be my mother. Be my covering. Be my mentor. Be the person that watches on me. Guide me. 
because I cannot do this on my own. There is a beginning of shifting that happens in this scripture that somebody that's been living years, that's been married, no kids or anything, been married and been living a certain way, has realized I have to do something completely different to achieve something different. I come on to you today to tell you you have to be careful of your mind. Be careful on what you allow to seep in, what you allow to hinder you, what allows you to struggle in your mind. Most of the wars that you go through happen in the mind. And as it stays in your mind, it begins to manifest in your heart. And anything in the heart that begins to manifest begins to pour out openly. I don't know who that's for in here. A lot of things you happen in your mind, so a man think it, so is he, that has now festered in your heart, and now everything that is pouring out of you has become negative, cancerous, sickening. The stench also reaching God has come filthy, amen? And God is saying, but you declared you're free. You've been singing, I am redeemed. You are saying, I'm going back to the enemy's camp and taking back what I stole, what he stole from me. But some of you have been trapped in the enemy's camp for a long time. Some of you have been dwindling and staying in a foreign place for too long. Some of you have become like Mephibosheth. You reside in a place of Lodabar. When you should be sitting at a king's table, you are of royalty. And God is saying, I have prepared a table before you. A table you sit with kings and princes and princesses and eat of the meat. You are of a royal priesthood. But because you think of yourself, well, here we go, the mind. Because you think of yourself a certain type of way, you limit yourself to what can be happening in your life. What's going to happen in your life is because of the limit. What happens in people connected to you is because of where you limit yourself. Some of you can hardly get out, worship out straight or use the gifts that God has given you because of the limit that has been put over your life. In the scriptures, God has given us many scriptures within the Bible that tell you, about your mind that tell you to be careful of your mind scriptures that warn you how powerful the mind is you don't believe me one scripture from philippians 2 5 says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus in romans 12 2 it says and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god in philippians 4 7 and the peace of god which surpasseth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Timothy, for 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but the power and of love and a sound mind. Romans 8 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Romans 8 7 says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. First. Romans 8 verse 27 says, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Ruth was in dire need of only what she's seen and experienced. But she was desperate to break a mindset that has limited her through her very existence. Ruth was at a place of nowhere she has realized. She was at a place where she didn't realize she was nowhere in growth. She was at a stagnant place. She said to herself, I am limited in all my ways of understanding. I, and I cannot live in such a way any longer. If I stay here, I will die. Amen. And as a woman, what will my legacy be? As a woman, what would my legacy be? If I died today without breaking past this limit, what would be said about me? You see, I, mar I marvel at people who do not like people, but would love for people to say nice things at their funeral. 
I don't know who's that for, Pastor Burton, but somebody going to be troubled. You want people to say wonderful things at your funeral, but you have never uttered words of blessings, of adoration. You've been more miserable than minded and like-minded of Christ. But you would want somebody to say something blessed, wonderful and blessing at your eulogy. Amen? Ruth, with a decision given to her by Naomi, understanding that what I thought I knew only allowed me to survive up to this moment. Seeing the decision that Orpha has made for herself, some people won't see that. They are at a pivotal crossroad. See, people won't realize they're at a pivotal crossroad in their destiny, even if it's right in front of their faces. Ruth looks at Naomi and says, let your people be my people. Let your God be my God. Where you lay, I will lay too. There's some key points I want to put before you because I'm running out of time. There's some key points I want to bring before you today. Ruth was looking in this process because this breaks through a lot. Women of God. I want you to understand, women and men of God, that once you break past that level in your mind, once you believe the words that are coming out your mouth, you bring life to it. If you saying, I am redeemed, I am free, and you believe it without a doubt, you are free. And who the sun sets free is deemed. Amen. I may not have figured it out, and what I've been doing may not have worked for a while, but I need to break past my current limit. Ruth is saying, no, me, Naomi, I retreat, I, in, in, I, treat, uh, I entreat thee, because you have something that I do not have. You have something that I'm fully lacking. In your God, in you, God has placed my next level of this process of breaking past my limit. So excuse me if I look a little clingy, but I got to get this right now. And I must break free. Another point I want you to realize is this. There is no limit to the doors that you allow to, to open in your life. Caveat is, and I'm talking more about the demonic doors. A lot of times we hear about doors being open, but not all doors are opened by God. And ain't nobody mad in here but the devil. Some of you have been thinking the blessings right before you is God, but it ain't God. It's a distraction from the enemy. And you just ran off with it. Yes. Oh, God. Amen. Before you, before you, Ruth, can get a Boaz, <laughs> you must see that there is a limiter placed on you through entering the world through sin that needs to be exposed, broken, destroyed, decimated, decapitated to reach a level of clarity that your Boaz, the prize, can be received in the right spirit. A lot of us have received some things, but we wasn't ready for it. <laughs> Truth be told, some of your mindsets are geared towards a type of image of what your Boaz should look like. We're going to call Boaz a prize. We're going to call, in this, in this moment, Pastor Burton, you know, I'm sorry because, you know, we, I'm, I'm supposed to be preaching scripture, but I like revelatory word. I believe there's a revelation to everything that you read. I preach Jesus as much as the next man, but I honor the father who came before him. Amen. And if you look at the Old Testament, there is so much that you can, you will literally thank God, the father, for more. A lot of people are focused on Jesus. See, I'm troubling somebody theology, and we should be rightfully so thankful for Jesus. But if the Father didn't give him okay to go. All right, now. Truth be told, some of your mindsets are geared towards a type of image of what your Boaz should look like. But in reality, you have begun to invite a spirit that is unpleasant to the Father's eyes and heart. So instead of ending up with Boaz, you're stuck with broke ass. Low as, high as, free as, smell as, done as, limit as, a whole bunch of people that has no blessing or fruit in your life. 
they come to just take, take, take. And a lot of us can't, we ain't going to say it, but a lot of men and women have come into your life and just take, 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 take. And nobody has come to put in. Why? Because you have picked up the foul thing. It's almost like eating of the fruit from the tree again. God told you not to eat of it, but it looked good. <laughs> I hear you, Lord. It, saw, it smelled good. It was good, pleasing to the sight. So what did you do? You ate of the tree again. In closing, because I'm done. I told you I didn't want to be before you long, because God is a great God. Once we get to a place of breaking past the limits breaking past what we think we know or what we feel we know and begin to get teaching from somebody. See, I don't see nowhere in the scripture it said Ruth did it on her own. It says nothing that Ruth was on an island. It didn't say Ruth didn't like people. It didn't say Ruth was like, nah, I'm going to do this dolly. You know what I mean? I'm going to do this by myself so nobody don't talk about me, don't degrade me or make me feel worse than I am right now. Ruth came out of herself for something greater. I truly believe everything that Ruth done in the book of Ruth, four beautiful chapters, was bigger than herself. If you read the whole book from first chapter one to chapter four, you will see Ruth never doubted not one thing Naomi told her to do. She didn't second guess it. She didn't question it. And even though Ruth was Naomi's daughter-in-law, because she picked up such a mantle and put herself in such a, a place to receive teaching and mentoring and began to grow. If you read the scriptures well, Naomi went on from calling her daughter-in-law to calling her daughter. See, somebody missed that right there. You no longer were, you no longer were just half of me. You are now fully with me. Yes. Ruth was called to do many great things in that book to help teach us that we have to break past the limit in our minds Amen. to get to a greater place in God. Amen. Jesus used, the Father in heaven used this woman of God, Naomi, powerfully to instruct Ruth because she had need to conceive Obed, who brought forth Jesse, Amen. who brought forth David. Amen. Nobody don't hear me in this place. In closing, I will close with this scripture. Ruth, chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, Ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's Amen. and all that was Chilion's and, Mar and Malon's of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malone, I have purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, and the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place. Ye are witnesses to this day. This passage of scripture shows us what is in store for us if we just totally surrender to the vision that is different from the one that we have put into place for ourselves. God is blatantly showing us, if you follow my lead, my direction, your family before you will be blessed. Spirits that have disturbed lineages will be free. Mm -mm -mm. You will be free if you could just see what has been limiting your worship, your praise, your deliverance, your healing of the mind, heart, soul, and spirit, then I, the Lord, can enter in completely and restore all that has been lost while lifting you up. Amen. Today I come before you to tell you to teach. I want to just teach and just restore unto you that you are the place, at the place, where in your mind you can break past the thing that limits you. And what you break past in the spiritual shall be in the practical also. With the worship, with the praise of your mouth, with doing something different, you will shift out of that place that you've been stuck at for such a so long. 
and enter into a place where God can left, lead you to more from the limits place to a place of limitless. God bless you all. I love you dearly. And I can't wait to see you operating from a place of limitless to everything around you becomes blessed because your mindset has changed. And God is waiting on you. I say that again for someone in this house and those online. God is waiting on you. He's waiting on your mind to be shifted. He's waiting for your cry. He's waiting for your surrender. And for some, he's waiting for your complete and total utter yes. You cannot make it. You will not make it in the where, in the place, and the position that you've been operating in. To get and receive from a place you have never had, you must do and move in something different. God bless you all. God's richest blessing be upon you. And I pray that everyone in this place be blessed. In Jesus' name. <laughs> I love our pastor Burton. Can we stand at this place? there be a place of worship of a people that want to move into a place of limitless that you're tired of being bound and tied up at the same place you're tired of being frustrated with the same old same old we're gonna just do a corporate prayer right where you are anybody in this place by the lifting of hands just want to be free from the thing that binds them, that holds them to their past. If you want that, just lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. If you want more than what you have been finding yourself to indulge in, more of God, more of the Spirit of the Lord, more of His anointing, more of His glory, more of His presence, more of being free, more of feeling Him around you, so much more that even your family and your children will be blessed and operate in high places of authority just because of your servant, just because of your reprogramming of your thought process. Lift your hands in this place. Lift your hands. I pray for you right where you are. Even those on live, I pray for you right. Ooh, I feel a pulling in this place. Begin to worship God with your hands lifted. Begin to open up your mouth and give God a loud sound of worship in this place. Begin to glorify the Father. Begin to shift your sound and begin to say something lovely, loudly to him. Let your, verse, let your voices be heard in this house. Father, we come before you now because your children are in need. Lord, your children have been through a lot. They have seen a lot. They have come through a lot and still going through even more. Lord, they some have even been through a stagnant place, a place that they do not realize or know what to do next. But Father, I know and the, I know more than that you know all and you see all, Lord, and you have just been waiting and requiring your children to say another yes, to surrender fully unto you. Father God, yesterday's yes won't do for today. So Father, they stand before you with hands lifted, with hearts wide open, receiving another yes from you, receiving healing from you, receiving deliverance from you, pulling strength from you, dropping all heaviness and weight and every heavy sunder at your altar, at your feet to receive another breakthrough from you, to receive another place past this limit place. Lord God, they have prayed, they have received this 
Father, they have prayed that have desired to be at another place, Lord God, and they are seeking to be guided at another place with you. Lord, send help, send a word, send a teacher, send a mentor, send covering, send strength, Lord, and even more, send your blood to cover them once more, Lord. Empower them to think different. Empower them to see different. Empower them to move different. Empower them to believe more than what they see before you. To believe that you already have things planted and set for them to be blessed. Father God, let every Ruth go forth to their Boaz. Let them reach the prize, Lord God, with a new mindset with new utterance and new steps, Lord God. Let the blueprint be changed that they may do something different in your sight. Fill them up afresh. Fill them up afresh. Fill them up afresh and strengthen their every body parts, Lord God, every knee, every joint, Lord, every sinew, Lord God, and pour your oil upon them. Let it flow from the crown of their head to the very sole of their feet, Lord God, that everything that they do, Lord God, shall be blessed. As long as they are led by your covering, led by your leading, led by your voice, led by your hand, led to their, your will, led to your way. Father God, do the greatness and everything that you have given them in dreams and visions within them, whether they be young or old. Lord God, let them experience your true form, your true experience, another touch from you, Father. Now we cast every limited thing into a place of no communication, into the dry place never to be returned. And freedom, Lord God, from past mistakes, freedom from everything that holds them, that hinders them from reaching your next level. Father, show yourself strong. Daddy, show yourself strong. Show yourself mighty in their families. Show yourself strong in their households. Show yourself strong in the workplace, at the, on the street, in the store, Lord God, in their prayer closets. Show yourself strong. That testimonies and deliverance will happen before this year's out. We believe it, we decree it, and let your children receive it. In no other name but your name we pray. And let the church of God say, Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Come on, brethren. Put your hands together. Amen. For an awesome word from the Lord. Amen. We just want to thank God for our minister. Amen. Walter Twitt. Amen. Begin an awesome word from the Lord. Sir, you have been mentored in the correct way. And thank you for the delivering of the word of the Lord. God continues to bless you and use you to his glory. My soul was blessed. May you be blessed and continue to grow from strength to strength. God bless you in Jesus' name. Again, put your hands together. Amen. Amen. For a wonderful man of God. Come and you can do better than that. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. We are going to... Just say thank you to each of you who have come out to join us, those on Facebook, amen, glory to God, Instagram, amen, and also on the YouTube. God bless you so much. I pray that you receive a word from the Lord today. May you continue to rise up in courage and be strengthened in the areas of your life that is well needed in such a time as this. God bless you. See you at the same place. Same time next week. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Those of you who are remaining in the house, we are hot. Amen. A very important part of the service where we're going to join together. Amen. And celebrate what God has already done for us. Amen. Those of you who will be participating in the Lord's Supper. Amen. I'm going to ask you to come a little bit closer. Amen. Yeah.